Hello everybody. In this tutorial we're going to learn how to make a shampoo bottle shown in this image here. The strategy to make a shampoo bottle here uh, we're going to use core features. The line that you see here, the feature that's above the line uh, that's a low feature, that's one part. The feature below the line it's also a low feature but that's the second part. So the part one, part two and the part third here is, is indent feature for labeling before we actually can use in the feature, we'll, we'll, we'll get introduced to surfaces, uh, especially if we just like offset surface and trim surface. We're also going to explore a uh, little bit of split command and the uh, indent feature here. If you don't have these icons on your feature tab, uh, just go to customize, take a look at command, go to features, and here's the split command, uh, here's the indent command. And here's the thicken command. All you need to do is just drag and drop it to your uh, feature tab. We're also going to explore thicken command a little bit. Now, shampoo bottle base file dot uh, solid part. That's the file that I'm using here. For those of you who are familiar with my website, you can go and uh, download a file from there. For those of you who are not familiar, I'll just introduce uh, my website real quick. It's uh, iprototype.in. Uh, if you're here, all you gotta do is uh, just go to SolidWorks real quick. And once you're down there uh, under SolidWorks, look for tutorial number 12. Second part, making a shampoo bottle using low feature. Also, you can search in the search bar and you'll be able to find it directly as well. I'm just gonna click uh, real quick here. On the website here, all the details be given in terms of images, uh, what types of sketches you need to make, what types of planes you need to make, and on particular plane, uh, what type of sketches you need to make. So those details are here. Uh, feel free to take a look at that. If you have questions, uh, just uh, leave me a comment down here, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. For those of you guys who are using SolidWorks 2010 and above, there is a download base file here which allows you to download a SOLIDWORKS file, uh, just a base file that I'm going to start with. And from there you can develop uh, various planes and you can sketch on it as well. So now let's take a look how we really do the shampoo bottle. So uh, I'm going to shift to SOLIDWORKS real quick. Uh, SOLIDWORKS. So I have uh, in, the, in my base file I have sketch one which uh, is nothing but just a spline and it gives me all the dimensions and everything to be defined. I just download it from my website. Um, we're gonna do it again, but yeah, that's a, that's the base file. Now the first step here we're going to take is we're going to make various uh, planes uh, in order to sketch on it. So there are four major planes that we're gonna make. Uh, we're gonna make first plane here, second plane here, third plane somewhere at the bottom. Remember, it's not at the point this. It's not gonna be on this. It's just gonna be parallel to top plane, but somewhere at the bottom. And the fourth plane is gonna be right here. So let's start doing that. I'm going to go to reference geometry. I'm going to click on plane. I'm going to click on point and I'm going to click on the spline. I'm going to make sure that my set original curve has been selected. It says fully defined. I'm going to keep going. For those of you who are using 2009 SolidWorks version, uh, you may not see the same interface, so don't freak out uh, and try to figure out how you can do. How can make a plane which is perpendicular to the spline and the point right here? I'll click OK. So that's my plane one. I'm gonna make uh, another plane real quick, which is at this point, and I'm gonna select the spline. Set origin code. Don't forget the step. So I have two planes. Now I'm gonna make a top plane visible because my plane number three, which is parallel to plane top, or the top plane. So I'm just gonna make top line visible, and if you go take a look on the on the website, uh, we have those details right here. So that's step one. That's plane one that we just created. Plane two that we just created. Plane three is parallel to top plane, so the dimension is 293. So I'm gonna exactly do that. Uh, I'm just make a plane reference geometry plane I'm gonna make it uh, 293 I'm gonna say flip because I went down not on top 
fully defined, I'm going to click OK. So that's been done as well. And now, last point is plane 4, which I'm going to create at uh, this point right here. So I'm going to click on plane. This is the point, and that's the spline. Set origin on curve, don't forget that step. Perfect. Uh, now we have all required planes uh, in the file. Now we're going to uh, go back to the website again. And the first uh, sketch that we see here, it's on uh, plane one. So I'm gonna go uh, to my plane one. And seems like it's smaller. It's more smaller a little bit, so just just got up my way. Right click on it, I'm gonna click on sketch. Now I'm just gonna make it control eight, which is normal too. You can do normal too from right here as well, or you can just right click on the plane and uh, you can click on normal too as well when you start sketching on it. I'm just gonna hit control eight on my keyboard, control eight, and that's gonna allow me to develop a sketch right here. I'm gonna make a real quick uh, ellipse. Make sure it's horizontal, this is vertical. And uh, do you guys remember the dimensions? The dimensions here are, I'm just gonna click on this. It has a 23 of width. Oh, sorry. Uh, it needs to be the other way, six and uh, 23 millimeters. All the dimensions are in millimeters. I think I made a mistake again. Not this way. I make sure you don't repeat that as well. It's six and it's 23. Click OK. I'm going to remain in the sketch mode. I'm going to select this first point and holding a control button, I'm going to select a spline. I'm just going to bring up the Pierce relationship box option right here to the left. I'm going to click on Pierce and just going to bring my sketch directly to the first point. So uh, the one stage is done, one sketch is done. I'm going to get out the sketch. First sketch is done. Second sketch uh, is another ellipse on top of here. I'm going to click on plane two and I'm going to click on sketch. Uh, I'm doing back and forth on the website uh, just to get a clear idea of what I'm drawing. So uh, you can do this simultaneously. I'm going to just develop another ellipse real quick. Make sure you don't make this ellipse um, at an angle or something. The dimensions here are uh, 53 to 5 millimeters and 32 millimeters. I'm gonna click OK, and what I'm gonna do is uh, remaining in the sketch. I'm just gonna select this little point here. We'll do a control button. I'm gonna select the spline, and I'm gonna give a Pierce relationship here again. It's gonna bring my loop strictly in there. So that's our sketch uh, two. I'm gonna cut out the sketch. Uh, now I'm gonna make a sketch on plane three. Let's take a look how I'm gonna do that. This sketch is a little tricky. I'm gonna go on plane three. I'm gonna click on sketch and I'm gonna click on uh, control five, which is top plane, or control eight, which, which will bring exactly the same interface uh, to you. Just gonna press control five. A quick uh, just make sure your uh, origins are to the to the right and I'm gonna start sketching a center line real quick from the origin just gonna do a random sketch uh, just for the construction just gonna click on ellipse and the, I'm gonna start drawing ellipse little away perfect and I'm gonna click on ellipse gonna give dimensions to it dimensions here it seems like 48.5 so this is 48.5 now to look for other dimensions uh, the main point here is just gonna be that this point needs to be on this construction line I'm gonna holding control button I'm gonna select both and I'm gonna do coincident relationship Make sure you don't select a midpoint by mistake uh, in the options. Now, between this point and the origin, the dimension has been given in the image on the website. If you go take a look, this dimension is uh, 12 point six seven two millimeters, and that looks pretty pretty good. Now, 
the radius here seems too big, but the dimension for that is also given on the website. I'm just gonna go just click on this from here to here. This dimension is given on the website and it is uh, 75 dot six seven two millimeters Make sure you give that as well and uh, now as we see carefully we can see the sketch down there is ready as well so the two sketches are ready uh, now we're going to make a sketch number five which is on plane four i'm going to select plane four right click and what click on select Again, I'm just going to hit Ctrl 8 on my keyboard, which is normal too, which you can do directly from here. Do that. And I'm going to make an ellipse a little away from the scene just so that I don't make any relationship by mistake. I have that ellipse here as well. Now, the dimensions for this ellipse are the bigger radius is uh, 84 and the smaller radius is uh, 47 click OK to it and uh, similar way we just have to develop one construction line from the origin uh, just trying to find the origin which is not allowing me to find it okay uh, now I can see that you see this uh, horizontal Relationship. If you make any other relationship by mistake, just click on the line and make sure it's only horizontal. So that's what we need here. I'm gonna hit Control 8 again to go normal to it. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick this ellipse and I'm gonna hold the control but I'm gonna select this construction line, make a coincident relationship, so we'll exactly drag to the same 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 point. Now the distance from the center of the ellipse and the origin is uh, given on the website is 37.691 millimeters. I'm gonna do that. We'll bring in a right right dimension and right alignment. And I guess uh, that's what it did. Those planes are too big. Uh, you can just always make them smaller just for the sake of uh, comfort. So two big ones too. I'm just gonna make that one smaller as well. Easy to work with. Okay, so now we have all the core sketches ready. Now the last sketch uh, that we're gonna make is on the front plane. So I'm gonna hit Control One on my keyboard. You can just click on front plane and sketch. That's the ellipse that we're going to make. Uh, make sure when you start sketching this ellipse, uh, you don't sketch it above the origin point. Don't sketch on this side, sketch on this side below the origin. Uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna click here, I'll click here. Perfect. Uh, the dimension detail has been given from the origin. Uh, the ellipse dimensions, I'm gonna real quick punch in. The breadth is 50, the small radius is 50, and the big radius is uh, 99.5, that's the ellipse, and uh, now we need to locate it at the right place, so the dimensions here are more like between this and this, so you don't, don't measure this or this, we need to measure this. So this dimension is 7.736, click OK. And uh, now there's one more relationship between this and, uh, oh God, uh, it's not with it. And this, this dimension this is 2.579 millimeters. And just to double check if all the dimensions are correct, I have given one extra dimension from the center point of the ellipse to the origin. And that uh, seems perfect to me. Make sure you check these details uh, with the images on the website while you're making. So this is all the details that we really need uh, in order to be sharp about it. Now we're going to use a loft, bow space feature here. 
If planes are coming in your way, there's a trick to hide those planes. Just click on view and click on hide all types. Oops, it hide all the sketches. Okay, that's not good. Uh, I'm just gonna do unhide that. I'm just gonna shift. That works with the features, I guess. I'm just gonna hide all, all the planes. And I'm gonna hide the top plane as well. I'm gonna hide this uh, big sketch, which is sketch 6. Uh, I don't think I really need that for now. I'm gonna use it at the last. So, I'm gonna hide that as well. Now, let's click on the loaf post base and the profile selection. So, we're going to select uh, this profile first and this profile second. And you can see all the details are right here. Uh, but you see those little green dots on top right here? That's the one that makes this object entirely twisted. So, we have to change those dots. Before we do that, we have to make some changes uh, in starting and constraint because it does not look at all like what it looks in the image right here, like the soft merge curve. But it's just a very small trick that we have to do here uh, and and start constraints which constraints uh, the shape between one profile to another based on uh, the profile so my start constraint is going to be normal to profile and my end constraint is going to be normal to profile now it's, it looks a little better all we have to do is uh, bring those green dots into the right alignment I'm going to bring the screen dot at the back right here to get the maximum now I just hide, so I'm just gonna bring it all the way to that blue dot over there, and we can see all the details are correct. As if you go to top view, you'll be able to see the green dot is on top and green dot is on top. Make sure it's on top from this way as well. If it'll be one down here, one top here, it will make no surface. Uh, we're going to click on apply to all, apply to all, and the tangent length is gonna be one and one, which is by default. Click OK so that one part is ready. Now we're going to make a second part. For this, we're going to do a loft pose base feature again. Click on that. This time, we're going to pick the edge of the first loft feature. I'm picking that. You can see the edge one in the selection. I'm picking this as my second, and I'm picking this as my third profile. You can see how it looks twisted. It's just nothing but this. We have to play with this point in order to make it perfect. And that's what I'm going to do here, real quick. So I'm bring um, right here. I'm going to bring this one right here. I'm going to bring this right here. That looks pretty good. I'm going to click OK. But it does not look uh, well. It looks here. You see, this just matches uh, the perfect shape. And in here, it does not look like that. So I think we need to make it look like that. So we go back to the low feature, add it on, and we exactly have to do end and start constraints here as well. I'm going to click on start constraint. This needs to be tangency to face. It's new. What it's going to do? Observe real quick on the screen as well. I'm going to click on tangency to face, and you'll see it becomes tangent to the first low feature from the starting to the end. And the second one, I'm going to click on normal to profile. Here I have uh, played with this purple arrows in order to make it smaller or bigger and uh, it came out that 1.3 here and 1.4 uh, here makes uh, it looking better so I'm gonna keep it but if you want to play with this arrow this is nothing if I'm gonna pull this it's gonna change the value here right here if I'll make it bigger you'll see it just makes it bigger and sometimes it doesn't make a surface because it's too big if you make it smaller it will make a surface too uh, looks to me, it's just more like how high you want this oval shape to carry in the profile. I just don't want to carry too much. Um, and I think 1.4 looks good to me. Make sure apply to all, apply to all has been selected. And the start constraint needs to be tendency to face in order to achieve the shape. I'm going to click OK to it. And as we can see, I'm just going to hide the sketch one real quick. Hide it. Uh, the shampoo bottle is uh, pretty much. This look very close to this. Now we have to work on this little detail here. It's here, and I'm just going to turn the sketch number six on. So now we can see this. You can see this detail we need to get here. That's a little tricky part. Uh, let's take a look how we do that. That's more like a surfacing part, and we'll be working in the section. Of... So the first part that we see here is that going to use this tool here called section view click on that which will cut the bottom in the half well, as you can see um, it looks all blue 
that means it's solid from inside and I don't think we want to start working with that all right before we do it I would like you guys to notice uh, the bottom part here ideal ideal bottles they do have little grooves or little uh, cut extrude in here and yeah, let's make that real quick before we go to the surface part I'm gonna click on this so just uh, pay attention I'm gonna click on the surface and I'm gonna sketch right here what I'm gonna do I'm clicking outside I'm clicking on the surface again and I'm just gonna click on offset entities which is like a shortcut of convert entities and then using offset entities I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do reverse and uh, I'm gonna make about uh, eight millimeters so you click OK uh, and you sketch eight millimeters I'm gonna go to features and I'm gonna go to cut X2 with the sketch I'm gonna use a draft here of 30 degrees and uh, the depth of the cut is gonna be about uh, eight millimeters so that looks okay make sure you punch in draft 30 degree uh, I'm gonna do click OK and uh, as you can see it's just a little nice little detail here now before we move on to the surface we want to make the bottle hollow so for that we're going to use a shell feature that's shown here click on shell if you don't see it go to customize features and down and drag and drop from there click on show here we have to pick the faces to remove I'm gonna pick this face this is the thickness of how thick you want uh, this bottle to be I'm gonna make it one millimeter thick I'll click OK and now if we do the section view, you can see that the now the blue part is only the only the edge which is one millimeter thick click OK and we can see the shampoo bottle and we can see nice little detail here uh, so just out of using draft and cut extrude now this is a section view it does not cut your bottle into half so just pay attention to that as well if, if you click on this again you have your bottle we're going to use uh, this section view feature here a uh, number of times so pay attention when we are in the section view and when we are not so section view I'm just going to go to section view again click OK and then uh, once we're here the first thing that we need to do here is that we are going to offset the surface right here you see if you click on the blue part you select the surface you cl click outside it's outside surface so we're going to play with the inside surface right here I'm gonna to go to surface tab if you don't have the surface tab just right click on any of the tab right here and you will see surface and whatever it is checked will show you um, on the screen so I'm just gonna click on surfaces and it's hidden now I'm gonna go down here and click on surface it will show me right here so that's what we need only to play with uh, the first thing that we you can use here is offset surface feature what this feature does is that just offset the surface uh, whatever the surface has been selected so I'm gonna click on offset surface and uh, for the offset right here I need offset distance of just two millimeters and that's it I'm going to select this surface and as you can see this yellow part just gives me a preview that's the surface it's going to create for me I'm going to click OK and now it doesn't show here uh, but you can see under the surface bodies and solid bodies that's the surface that we just created and that's a solid body that's the main shape of bottle now we're going to work pretty much with the surface offset here so I'm just gonna hide this first solid body because we're not gonna play with that much I'm gonna hide that and uh, if I go out of the section, you can see this is entirely surface. You can see the blue at the back, so there's no bottom. That's the main part that we're going to play uh, with for a little bit. So this. So from here, we're going to use a trim surface. Uh, this is the second tool here. What it does, it just by using a plane or a sketch, it does allow you to trim many surfaces. Uh, in this case, we want only play with this oval shape. We don't need the outside surface uh, to make indent uh, the feature indent that we're going to use in the future. I'm going to click on trim surfaces and let it stay standard. Let it say trim tool. The trim tool is our sketch here, sketch six. Uh, you can select from the tree as well, sketch six. There we go. And make sure you are under remove selections. I'm going to click on remove selections and remove selections are the part. See, when you have your mouse over, you will see these details here, what you want to remove. Either this, or either this, or you want to remove this. Uh, in our case, we just want to remove this. So I'm going to click on this. Keep it to neutral. 
all the details as it is make sure it's remove selection standard and then click ok and now we can see that that's the detail that we really need in order to make indent feature now if you're familiar with indent feature what indent feature really needs is that uh, to simplify indent it's, it's like making a dent on any surface uh, when you have a hammer in your hand a small hammer and you make a dent on someone's car that's just gonna give a shape of hammer on their car if you're using a stone and if you make a dent using a stone then you will have a stone shape uh, on someone's car as a dent so whatever is the object that you really make a dent with uh, the other surface receive the shape from that particular dent object but similarly the better or the prettier your dent, the prettier uh, you will make a dent on the surface. So I'm going to explain this a little more when we get to that point. Uh, for now, let's uh, let's use a thicken tool in order to give a thickness to it because we ultimately are going to use this both the surfaces as a denting tool, and that needs to be solid so that we can use them. We cannot use surfaces right away. You see here surfaces. The moment I'm going to use thicken on it, it will change to solid. So you can take a look at that as well. I'm going to click on thicken. Uh, I'm going to use nine millimeters in thicken, and the first surface I'm going to do is this. Instead of both the sides, I'm just going to use it uh, outside. I want it to be outside. Uh, make sure this merge result is unchecked. Let it stay unchecked. I'm going to click OK to it. Select another one. Thicken feature. I'm going to uncheck the merge result. Uh, that's the one and I'm gonna make sure it's outside I wanna extrude both outside I'm gonna tell you in a minute why outside I'm just gonna hide this sketch uh, it's just bothering me I'm just gonna hide it real quick okay perfect that's the detail now as I mentioned prettier the dent prettier the details would come out so I'm gonna make this dent look a little more prettier I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna make it uh, two millimeters of nice little radius I'm gonna click OK I'm going to do a similar thing on the other side as well. I'm going to select this edge and give it a 2mm fillet. Looks okay to me. Now, you see, remember the first main shell body is our shampoo bottle. I'm going, to, I'm going to make it visible. So, as you can see here in the detail that we have our shampoo body, and there are two objects that's coming out of it that we just prepare on fillet 1 and fillet 2 using surface uh, offset and trim surface so it needs to intersect it if you click on section view now click OK you'll be able to see that this particular object is intersecting to the surface and we need that in order to make a dent or, or in order to use uh, indent feature so now let's take a look how we use indent feature I'm gonna go to feature and indent here again if you don't have this indent feature on your feature tab don't panic go here go customize go to commands Go to features and here is indent. Just click, drag and drop on your screen and it'll work from there. Just I already have it. I'll click on indent real quick. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to use this object that we created later as as our indent object, and this is our target body. So this is like the stone in your hand, and this is someone's car. So the target body is someone's car. In our case, it's a sample body. So I select a shell one, that's our target body. Uh, make sure to select uh, the tool body right here. We need that to be this particular uh, object. But remember, we need to select it from the right side. If you select this side, it may not show up. So I'm going to click here on this side because this is the face we want to make a dent to it on the surface. So I'm going to click on this. And we'll think a little bit and you will see this yellow preview. That's like the whole dent. You see the dimension here? Bigger the thickness of the dent, uh, that means how thick you want the surface to be after the dent. We don't want it uh, too, too thick. I just want it 2 millimeters. And I just say clearance. So clearance from the from the main denting object. I need a 2 as well. And I'm going to click OK. Now we'll think for a while and you'll be able to see that the feature is success now. But you still see this part out here which is more like uh, uh, the our, our indent part the stone in our, our example so I'm just gonna right click on this and I'm gonna hide it the moment I hide it you can see a nice pretty detail that's been made with that object 
So what we did is that we used that particular object to make a dent on Shampoo Bottle. And that's what it's known as indent in that feature. Now we did it one side, now we need to do it on another side. So I'm going to get out of section view. Uh, the other part is hidden from here. And I'm going to start working on this side. I'm going to click on section view again. But this side, I'm going to click on this reverse section direction. That gives me to play with another side. And I'm just going to do the same features indent. Click on indent. The target body is shampoo. That's our car in the example. And the tool body is this particular object. Don't don't by mistake pick outside, it's just not going to work. Uh, let me try and show you guys. If I click on that, let's see what happens. Oh, it did. But did you see what it did? It doesn't show the details outside, it does show the detail inside. So if I click OK in this case, and if I hide this object, you'll see this part as an indent. So it's a wrong indent. So to solve this problem, if you're dealing with this, make sure this is show and under your indent you're not picking the wrong surface you have to pick the surface that's inside I'm just gonna go and edit that oh, she's still thinking I'm gonna clear this right click clear selection we don't want to select this outside we want to select this inside click that make sure this parameters are two and two and that was correct to me just gives me a right preview inside I'm gonna click OK thanks a little bit now I'm gonna go I click and I'm gonna hide this so I have details ready here as well I'm gonna click on section view and I can see both my both the sides have my details right here perfect that seems okay to me now now this is very sharp here I'm just gonna give a two millimeters of fillet real quick two millimeter that looks okay now if we see carefully this is still like a single body we need to make it two different body because for manufacturing you will need a top part separate and a bottom part separate in any technique like injection molding or any other technique that you use it's just gonna be similar situation you have to make one part here one part here and probably depending on the situation we have to cut it from here as well in order to have to have like open open section uh, molds so okay we're not gonna go there for now uh, we just have to make this into two different parts to do that I'm just gonna make a sketch on plane from plane to do that I'm gonna make a sketch on front plane I'm gonna hit control one on my keyboard and I can see that detail right here I'm gonna front plane I'm gonna make a sketch here and I'm just gonna select this edge right here and I'm gonna click on convert entities that gives me a line then I'm just gonna make one line here it's like AutoCAD style to two center line and why I'm doing this is to extend this, this line here if this line does not pass with the whole object it's not gonna cut it we're going to use that line as a cutting tool uh, so I'm just gonna go and uh, use extend entities click on that and click on that perfect uh, under the trim entities I'm just gonna start removing this uh, doesn't matter actually much so right click and delete I should have done that earlier but you guys can save your time and not do the mistakes that I did Ooh, okay it's not uh, we don't want to play with endpoints just uh, delete that particular part and click OK now once you have this little line here exactly in the center longer than shampoo bottle we're going to use a split feature right here if you don't have this don't panic go to customize commands feature and get a split feature. Uh, I'm just gonna click on split and I'm gonna select this line as a trim tool because that's our trim tool and I'm gonna click on cut part and pay attention here there are two different two separate parts down here now earlier was no separate parts I'm gonna click on both because we want to keep both the bodies make sure none of these are checked they should be unchecked both the boxes should be unchecked click on this and this we want both the bodies it's like resulting bodies I'll click OK and now you can see it has two different bodies split one and split two that's our body for top and body for bottom there we go it's four, four separate bodies now what we're gonna do the edge needs to look a little little separate so I'm just gonna give a little fillet to those edges I'm just gonna hide this part real quick I'm just gonna go fillet uh, I'm just gonna get one millimeter of fillet and I'm going to select the outer edge. I'll click OK. 
and uh, now I'm just gonna unhide the bottom part go fill it my entry by default is one millimeter I'm gonna take this edge this time get a little fill it down here as well and uh, there we go so it looks exactly what we were looking for it's a nice uh, little shampoo bottle this area has could be used for um, any type of branding some pictures and ingredients and other details uh, like right here and I've just applied some uh, rough plastic material and shiny plastic material on the surface here and rendered it quickly using PhotoView 360. Uh, that's an attachment that comes with uh, SolidWorks 2009 and above. Uh, there we go. I think, uh, so I think that's uh, pretty much. Uh, our feature tree is very simple. Uh, we use loft a couple times. We use um, cut extrude shell, surface offset, surface trim, thick and fill it couple times we use indent and at the end we use uh, split and fillets again and that gives us the detail that we see right here in the rendered image uh, if you have any questions or concern about uh, if you got stuck somewhere feel free to uh, leave me some comments on the website right here under the shampoo bottle tutorial section you can just uh, leave me a reply or a question here and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. I think that's it for now. Uh, hope it was informative. Thank you for watching.